All right, so what are clubs? Why, why do they call that clubs? Those don't look like clubs. No, my family always called them puppy dog feet. <gasps> mean mine too. That's what my grandmother used to oh say. Oh my gosh, yes, because that's what they look right. like. They, they don't look, look like, like clubs. clubs. That's yeah. dumb. Yep. All right. This is going to be good. <laughs> this is good. All right. <laughs> We're ready to go. Welcome to episode 95 of the Goulet Pen Cast, where fountain pens are still a thing. I'm Drew Brown. And I'm Adrian Leinberger. Hey, and we're here from Goulet Pens to deliver this casual and informal, tangential, and extraneous, superfluous, and inst- ex- oh no, extemporaneous fountain Ooh. pen show where we talk about what's going on at the Goulet Fountain Pen Company and in our fountain pen lives. In today's show, we're going to talk about affordable grail pens, investing in a new ink property, some interesting hypothetical prompts, and we're going to test drive a dip pen that writes either super thin or super wide, according to your whim. And also, Brian Goulet is not here. We have Adrian here, who is our customer care manager, and she's going to join me for this romp that you are hopefully going to join us in as well. Come along so, with us on romp. this ride. Yes. yes, it's a romp. It's I a already romp. said it was a romp. It's a romp. We're romping, not riding. Is that like a frolic? It's like a, ooh, yes. It's like a frolic? But more bumpy. Okay. Yeah, fro- can... frolics are total whimsy. A romp, there's some texture involved. Okay. Yeah. I can go like with cobblestones. that. cobblestones. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. you romp along cobblestones. Right. I get it. Um, you know, the other thing is like what you do in a field of flowers. Yes. yes. Yeah. Frolic All right. We've field. established that. Uh, we're going to get started with some feedback. And uh, feeding back to us first this week, I'm going to say that this is from Guinera. It's not really a word, but we're just going to go with Guinera. Drew is what you get when a villain origin story gets reoriented toward wholesome activities. There's always an underlying glimmer of mischief, but towards (laughs) wearing large hats instead of filling rivers with radioactive waste. Do you feel like I'm like almost a supervillain, but in a wholesome version? I don't think I ever would have used that as a descriptor for you, but now that I hear that, yes. I don't mind Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I don't I, mind it. Like a, ho- like a wholesome villain. Like a wholesome would, villain. So not a hero, just someone You're like who could chaotic, be terrible, but you know isn't really applying himself in that yeah. direction. You're like chaotic good or maybe chaotic neutral. Okay. Like you like to spread chaos, but also joy. Yeah, joy is chaos. Joy I, I'll is take chaos. that. All right, well, yeah. thank you, Guinera, maybe. Um, okay, Forthy says, regarding pocket sewing, you can whip stitch it down from the top. Because I was talking about my jean jacket patches. Mm-hmm. Whip stitch it down from the top, then come up through the patch. It creates a kind of spiral with the thread. Adrian, I read this mm-hmm. last week. Mm-hmm. And guess what I did this weekend? Did you whip stitch a patch? I whip stitched it twice. Oh my gosh. Because not, not, on, not on, a, uh, on a pocket, but uh-huh. I got lower on my sleeve, uh-huh. where it's just really hard to get oh, all up yeah, in. Yeah. So I had... I whipped it. I whipped nice, it good. Nice. Yeah. I was going to say, I wonder if if a uh, whip stitch is what the surgical procedure is named after. Like, is that a, a like, um, stitches? Is that like what it, they do with stitches? It might be. I don't know. I don't think so. I think, I think, I think stitches like in, in on human parts, kind of like the stitches wrap around each other oh, okay. a bit. I don't know. Yeah. I never had Believe stitches. it or not, I'm not a surgeon. Or a doctor or any sort of field medic. Uh, So I don't know. All right. Isabella says, I've been using Drew's flicking technique with great success for ages. So what I said last time, Adrian, was when I'm cleaning a pen, Mm -hmm. at the very end, to make sure I have no inky water left, Mm -hmm. I'll hold a paper towel like this and and just flick it like that. Do you do that? Yes. See, Brian did not like that. Brian did not like that. He was like, I would not recommend that. That's bad news bears. Oh, I do you not. just make sure you hold on to it tight. Right. You... It works though. So you get all the water and it's, out. And, and it's better than just touching the nib to paper towel because yeah. you, you get stuff that's way back in there. Yeah. And then you don't have to worry about it being diluted or... I agree. Yep. Now, yes, there, there are risks involved, but yes. I find that it, it, it works for me. So, so does uh, Isabella here. Um, I wrap like them in a thick layer of tissue and shake them out a few times and it gets rid of most of the moisture. Mm-hmm. It doesn't feel risky if you wrap it carefully enough, but obviously don't try this with expensive pens. I would say I d- actually don't know if wrapping it in a f- cloth is better. I kind of, I, I feel like I, I have a stronger grip on the pen if I just use my fingers. I, yeah. I get nervous having like something between me and the pen. Yeah, when I do it, I actually do it like down towards my countertop or something, mm-hmm. but there's there's yeah. space between 
where I am and where the paper towel well, is. Well, Isabel is not the only person that uses the flick method. So, um, yeah, it, we're, not, our, we're not alone. It's our t tried and true method now. Yes, yes there yeah. you go. Um, and then Young Cow says, Drew, I feel you about the corned beef hash. I was talking about how I like the canned stuff last oh, it's week. That's the only kind. Amen. Who wants homemade corned beef hash? Oh, not me. Not, not when I go to a city diner anyway. No. It needs to have the crusty goodness. Mm -hmm. I aspire to make that kind of home, but it takes so dang long, so much moisture. Uh, yeah. I also have tried to make it at home. It just comes out looking like dog food. Yep. I cannot get that good crust on it. No. Nope. Will somebody please tell me how to do that? Yes. Uh, and share it in the comments so I can see it too. Yes. I need to have that happen. So you, you can tackle the rest there. But okay. yeah, I definitely need, I need to figure out my corned beef hash game. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the only, it's the only thing where canned is like significantly better, I think. What about cranberry sauce? I make really good cranberry <gasps> sauce. Oh, so right. I'm a little, you yeah. know. Sorry. No, no, that's good. Uh, so XX Flip Chick 22XX All right. says, thanks for deciding not to cancel next week's pincast. We really appreciate it. Well, Thank you, I Adrian. really appreciate it too. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. Uh, Squirts1 says, Platinum Kordos Matte. Are these soft touch coatings? Is it the type that will melt off and turn to sticky goo in a few years? Um, I don't think it would turn to sticky goo. I don't think so. I do know what they're talking about though, because some matte finishes like get that, when exposed to oils. Yeah, they get kinda, that kind of. They kind of get sticky and nasty. Yeah. I don't think so. T to me, they have they felt familiar to other things that I've had um, that haven't gotten sticky and disgusting, but I'm sure yeah. there's some solvent that could get on them that would create the stickiness. But yeah. I don't think it is something that you would run into in your normal writing experience and pen cleaning experience you know stick to the stick to the safe things water don't soap use and water. acetone don't ever use acetone yeah. or alcohol or anything yeah. like that but yeah if you're just sticking good. with pen flush and water you should be fine yeah and let's see michelle canfield 8013 thanks as always for the friday afternoon diversion so this is random, but what is that geometrically shaped object behind Brian's right ear? Well, I'm assuming your right ear. My right ear. All right, so there are two geometrically shaped objects. He's got a. Uh, he's got this thing, which is a type of a Rubik's cube that he solved. It's a Rubik's some monstrosity sphere, lots of sided thing. And then he's got this beast. Which is even bigger and more monstrosity ish. Yes. Are those hollow on the inside? Are those hollow? I don't know. If they were, he would be devastated if we dropped it. Well, that just means it. he gets to do it again, so he there, might not mind. There we go. For that matter, what does your studio look like in its entirety? If you remind me, I'll take a picture when we are finished and I'll, I'll, I'll put it up. But um, it's very small. Yes. This like, used to be a I'm, closet. I'm almost touching the wall right here. And I can almost touch the other wall. Yeah, It's, it's a it's, nice cozy space. It's very cozy. It's very cozy. Um, would love a view of the rest of the room. Kind of related to that, where did you get the music? It's very catchy and a good addition to oh, the show. Sorry. It's uh, custom. I paid a guy to do it. I don't know who it is. Off the top of your but head? No, no. It's, uh, I, will, I, cannot, I, not, I can neither confirm nor deny that is Peter Gabriel. Okay. I can also Fair. neither confirm nor deny that it is Sir Elton John. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It, For the record, I'm glad your show is a long one. Don't be podcast minimalists and push to shorten it. The fountain pen news, community interaction, and banter are all welcome parts of my Fridays. Well, nice. thank you so much for that. You know, I appreciate that. And you know what? Because I appreciate that so much, I will go ahead and deny that it is neither Elton John nor Peter Gabriel. Sorry. I'm a little disappointed. I know. But I know. it's okay. Okay. All right. Hopefully our banter lives up. Well, we can banter. Yes. I've known Adrian for a good long while. We're good pals and uh yeah. we're going to we're going to take it and run with it. We are. All right, we're going to move on to new stuff. And of the new stuff, I'd like for you to get us started. Yes. With new stuff number uno. So, if uh, you all have paid attention to anything, the Twisby Eco is a fantastic pen, and we've got a new color coming this week. It is the Twisby Eco Heat. It is a really nice warm orangey color. It'll be launching on Friday, which is today, if you're watching the pen cast, and uh, it will be $32.99, available right here at GoolyPins.com. If this is the Heat, if they made one that was called Cool, mm -hmm. what color do you think that should be? It should be like a 
like a glacier blue, like that like piercing blue that like you see in a glacier. I like that. Yeah. That's not like a soft blue, but no, like a. Yeah, ice blue. Yeah, ice blue. Yeah. Um, we will also, by the time this airs, have available the Pelican M1000 in Rotten Red Infinity. So this is a red resin pen, but the red is impregnated with silver powder. So it's a little bit of a sparkly red. And then broken up um, into that red resin are, you know, um, kind of, I guess, vertical yeah. um, Beautiful. blocks of rotten. So abalone shell. Uh, inlaid into it. It's a really interesting pattern. You don't often see just stark red resin mm -hmm. and rotten. Yeah. So red rotten, though, sounds cool. Yeah. I think it just sounds like a super villain. Red Robin or something like that. That could be your super villain name. You're I not look terrible in red. Look how pink I am. That, yeah. I can't do red. I'm a pink man. Red just makes me look more pink. What if your whole outfit was the abalone and you just went by red Robin? Red oh, Robin. Oh, I could probably be sponsored by Conklin if I did that. <laughs> they weren't full abalone. <laughs> I love it. They'd put, I could, yeah, get a sponsorship deal. Um, and then finally, we've got another Delta Lapis Blue Celluloid Pen. So we had this one. We mentioned it earlier. We had that one just in the chrome trim, but now we have a rose gold trim available uh, as well in this version. So that's $556. It is a 14 karat gold nib piston pen, and there's only 188 of each of the rose gold and then another 188 of the chrome that we already talked about. So that's available now as well. And that's a really beautiful pen. I got to see uh, it is. one of the ones in chrome come up to a customer care today and it's really nice looking. Yeah, you don't often see celluloid coming down the pipeline these days. No, no. So, so that is our what's new. And we're gonna move on to our Q&A segment at this time. Nice, I'm very excited. So I have a question for you. Yes. Uh, let's see, Danielle Nonato, 2737. I saw one of your videos from a few years back calling the Pilot Custom 823 an affordable Grail pen. Any other pens you'd put into this category? Well, it depends, Adrian. Uh, <laughs> what kind of, what, what, what sort of Grail are we talking about? No. Um, so I define a Grail pen as a pen that I really, really want, mm -hmm. but has a certain degree of inaccessibility to me, like an immediate inaccessibility. Yeah. Either yeah. it is rare, difficult to find, cost prohibitive for my personal budget, mm -hmm. um, and is just a really nice pen. So that can mean a bunch of different things to you, depending on where your budget is, at what stage you are in this hobby. Uh, like for example, my first Grail pen was a Lamy 2000. That was like, I, That's a I wonderful, couldn't, yeah. I couldn't imagine actually getting a Lamy 2000. Yeah. I had my safaris, you know, I had a couple little pens, you know, the 30 to $50 pens. I think that's, you know, pretty common area to start at. So a 2000 with a gold nib. Yeah. Like an actual gold nib. That was a big deal. Yeah. And I just thought yeah. that like, if I could get that pen, that would be it. That would be all I need. So that was a grail pen. Now at this stage of my pendum, I'm in a, different mindset so uh -huh. 2000 is no longer grail pen territory but it's kind of a moving target depending on where you land so yeah i would say a 2000 could absolutely be an affordable you know relatively speaking grail pen it is a gold nib mm -hmm. it's not it's you know less than 300 dollars, and you can find them pretty you know at, at every major retailer so um but it's a jump up there you're talking about you know a you know 200 some dollar nib a pen yeah, yeah. it's not that's an expensive pen. Yeah, like, that's an expensive anything. It is, absolutely. Yeah. Like it's an expensive watch, an expensive knife, an expensive, you know, number of different things. But so I would say 2000 is, is, is right up there. I would also say that most of the gold nibs that Pilot has in the, you know, kind of 200 to $300 range would mm -hmm. be good affordable grail pens, you know? Yeah. Like the E95S, for example, if you wanted to shoot for one of those as your first gold nib fountain pen, much like a Lamy 2000, mm -hmm. you're going to not, it's less than the cost of like a PlayStation 5 or something. Oh, so, yeah. Like, it's, it's I not, think like people like buy 136 or yeah, 142. People buy those all the time. And so yeah. I don't think that that price realm is considered crazy. I mean, all of our phones yeah. are going to be far more expensive than yeah. a Pilot E95S. Yeah. So people spend that money on hobbies. 
um, or necessities, depending on what you want to think of the phone. But uh, an E95S is going to get you a gold nib, but more mm -hmm. importantly, it's going to get you a very different experience. Like you get that pen yeah. after having a bunch of steel nib pens, and it's going to feel like, oh, I have achieved something. I got this. And yes. it's, it's different. It, it just... It performs differently than all my other pens did. So I think that's important too, because you want a grail pen, something that you're really looking forward to, something that you're saving up for to deliver, right? Yeah. And we've had people that have spent hundreds of dollars on pens thinking it's just going to be the best because I spent way more on this $800 pen than I did this $400 pen. And they're disappointed because yeah. there's a big difference between an 800, uh, sorry, a, like a $30 pen and a $200 pen Absolutely. than there is a $200 pen and an $800 pen. Yeah, the like, the I guess if it were like an exponential graph or something, sure. like the difference between 30 and 200 is way steeper than 400 to 800. Yeah. In quality and yeah. writing. Because we talked about that yeah. last week. We talked about how people wished that when they first got started in fountain pens, they knew that cost doesn't necessarily equal quality and writing experience. Yeah. We've got other factors yeah. there. So, um, yeah, I would say the Pilot, Gold Nibs, good bet, regardless, or the Lamy 2000, I think, are in that category. If you're starting off in a relatively, you know, in, in the common place, a lot of people start off with, with like $20 pens. I think that a 2000 or an E95S is a mm -hmm. good jump up in an affordable grail pen. I like, I like both of those options yeah. a lot. Do you have any yeah. more to add? Or? Um, I mean, it's sticking with Pilot, so I kind of feel bad, but I think the 823 for a lot of people is the grail pen. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to think about something different, but I would say um, the Pilot Justice 95. Oh, that one doesn't get talked about a lot. It doesn't, but it's just so cool. You've got the uh, adjustability of the nib, so you can make it a little bit more on the soft side or a little bit more on the not soft side, um, a little bit more stiff. Do you have it? No, no, no. Oh. I'm just going to write it down oh. so I can add a picture to it. Oh, very nice. Um, and I think that one gives you kind of that, that it's something a little bit different that you're not necessarily going to find anywhere else. So that's what kind of sticks out in my mind about a grail oh, yeah. pen is it's going to be very different from anything else you see. Yeah, I like that. I that pen does not get talked about enough. I mean, it's up there in price, but it like to your point, it's it, sub 500. It I think. delivers something very unique. Yeah. No other pen price, not, you know, regardless does that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think that's a, that's a really solid option if you're looking for something different. That is solid. Yeah. All right. Adrian. Yes, Drew. Ichiro is asking us, <laughs> why are there so many bad red inks? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Ugh. Uh, it's, um, it's, it's a bit loaded. I don't know. Are you going to choose to be offended by this or um, inspired to provide Ichiro with clarity? I am going to provide clarity. Mm. So um, in, in my other life, I am also a bit of an artist. And so I have familiarity with a lot of um, like, Glazed dyes and multimedia glass dyes for sure. And, and you, you do a whole lot with a whole lot. Yeah, I, I do. I like to. I like to. You don't have a. You don't really have a concentration. You, Not yet. You've, Not yet. You've done art with quite a few different things. Pretty, yeah, a lot. But red is always a very hard color to get, no matter what medium you're working with. So um, the reason for this is actually the the wavelength, and I want to I want to get it right. So I wrote down some notes, but. It is got a really wide range on the wavelength of what you can see in terms of nanometers. So for example, the range for like blue is only about uh, 40 to 60 nanometers in range. So if you're thinking like a football field, like 40 to 60 meters, that's only like 20 meters difference. So it's, it's not or it's like 40, like 40 you, nanometers different. Are you possessed by Brian Goulet right now? I kind of am. What happened? I find stuff like this really interesting. Oh my God. So blue greens, blues slash and greens are very, very close on the wavelength to each other. So it's easy to say like, that's a true blue, that's a true green. Um, the red nano wavelength or nanometer on the wavelength is around 140 in the range. So That's it's just a, bigger a number. huge range of what's what what your eyes can see is red. So part of the issue if you're talking about like why doesn't my red ink look true red, super, you know, saturated, brighter everything, it could literally be because it's in that spectrum that's just really wide and so what you're seeing over on this end 
doesn't look the same as what you'd see over on this end. Now, I am not a scientist, and I hope you all understand that. I did not. What's a nanometer? <laughs> it's the wavelength. It's something of, that you of measure. Light? Yes. Okay. Of light. Wavelength of light, what your eye can see, UV light. But basically, there is more range for red to be seen. Like perceived by perceived. your eyes. Yes. Yes. Okay. Wouldn't that be better, though? Um, no, because the cones in your eyes that uh, see the color red, you actually have fewer of those cones in your eyes as well. So not only is there a wider range of what is considered red, what your brain says is red, but there are fewer receptors in your eyes that take in that color red. So actually seeing red is, is not as easy to see as some other colors based on what I read online and what I've found in like glaze techniques and glass blowing techniques and, you know, like dye techniques in general. If you dye your hair red, you know that this is a whole thing. Like red is just a really hard color. Huh. So if we're talking about why do red inks not have that really true red, you know, they, they fade a little pink or maybe they have a little bit more orange undertone or blue undertone. That's one of the big reasons why, in my opinion, uh, based on science the science now if you're <laughs> I asking checked with science i checked with science because science um if you're asking why red inks uh stain or um, are just not as vibrant as you'd be looking for i think that really depends on the brand my like go-to red ink for a while now has been diamine poppy oh it's a nice, bright. That is a nice one. It's a really good, bright We've red. We've had that one for a long. That's yeah. an older diamond. It gets too. it gets overlooked quite a bit, but um, I have it in an Opus 88. I have not refilled that Opus 88 probably in about three months. Oh. I uncap it, writes like a dream. How many pens do you have inked up right now? Six. Oh, that's not bad at all. No, I lied. Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking of one half. Wait, <laughs> wait, what? How do you go from six to twelve? I for, I was like thinking about just one half of my twelve case. Oh, I was like, oh, okay. those are, and then I was like, oh wait, no, there's a whole mm -hmm. other other okay. side. That's still not. That's still not crazy. I mean, and can, one of those is that. It's the Opus eighty eight. Yeah. Dang. I filled it up when I got it, and that was before Christmas, and I have not refilled it since. Wow. So that's more than three All months. Right. That's like seven months. And you were enjoying some poppy red. I am enjoying it. It writes like a dream every but time. But have you tried Matador? I have not. Because it's good. Is it? It's really good. Is it, does it have a little bit of that brown undertone? Yeah. Because that's what I'm afraid of. Yeah, it does. But yeah. that makes it better. Hmm. <laughs> See? Bad reds. So many bad what? reds. With a brown undertone? Oh! No, I want... I brown want, makes it better. I actually think blue undertones, like make it better you're, as you're, opposed I, to like the orangey yeah, undertone. You're, you're, yeah, I, if I had to pick between blue undertones or orange undertones, I would go with blue yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, right. I know I know Matador is a very popular one. That's probably, that's my number one favorite. I, yeah. I, honestly, like with uh, Red Dragon is popular, yeah. which I like, but it, for me, it gunks up my pens too often. Mm. I get the I get the the barnacles the crusties the, the crustaceans yeah and then oxblood's nice a little it's too dark too dark yeah. rider's blood is a little too dark yeah but I think Matador is um, close to a solid red but that doesn't make me feel like I'm looking at graded papers yeah like that I don't want that makes me traumatized I yeah don't, I, don't, yeah. I don't need that in my life anymore in my uh, going down the rabbit hole to find out about this red information um, I came across a study where it said that. Teachers who grade their papers in red ink over time, those children will uh, have lower test grades because the red ink is like so really traumatizing. Okay, so it's my teacher's fault, not yes, mine. Yes, absolutely. So I came in here and I see Adrian's got a little piece of paper with her notes on it for today. And red is the first letter here. And next to the letter red, or the word red, is a red gummy bear. Yeah. I thought you had some sort of like gummy bear presentation to do oh i mean but in fact you're just you just have I snacks just, i just have snacks okay and the red one and but you have them in a traffic light configuration yeah you've got red yellow green yeah there's no more to that than just happenstance yeah because okay. those were the colors in my gummy See, bears i thought you had some presentation planned with these gummy bears um, because you had the word red right there and then they're in traffic light like, yeah i should have i mean wow. i don't even have an orange gummy bear that we could make with the yellow and red all right. Well, I mean, that's fine. Yeah. But uh, I did have some lofty some expectations, expectations for those gummy bears. You know, my rambling scientific, probably butchering oh, of that... how wavelengths work. Well, you know what? The great thing about this show, Adrian, is yes, that we can, say, we can say something pretty dumb and all of the more intelligent people out there 
let us know yes. very politely, I might add, how, how dumb we how are. How wrong we are. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I look forward to the education. Yeah. No, yeah. they're great. They really are. They're <laughs> very, very polite in, in letting us know that we have no idea what we're talking about. Uh, All right. Okay. Um, oh, you're up next. So, uh, yes, I'm going to ask you another question. John L. asks, if you had to use only one brand of ink, current or future release, for the rest of your life, okay. what brand would it be? What brand would it be? That's a... Mm, diamond. It would have to be diamond because of the uh, sheer volume of yeah. variety. Like that, they've got the most ink by far. Um, yeah, yeah. And if I'm only going to use one, I, I don't, I, I'm trying to think like what's my favorite brand of ink. Uh huh. I don't know if I have a solid answer for that. Again, it might just be diamond because I'm a serial sampler. So I just always try new things and I find yeah. myself going back to diamond most often because they have such a crazy variety. Yeah. Um, and they're all pretty standard in, in performance in terms of like flow. Yeah, and they don't have any like crazy outliers. No, um, Other no. than the ones with like, you know, shimmer, they can behave wild. But yeah. I, I will say that Robert Oster and Sailor, I've been going into more recently to get mm -hmm. colors that Diamine doesn't have because Diamine yeah. doesn't have a lot of those lighter colors. Yeah, that's like true. Sailor that's and true. Robert Oster are moving more into those, you know, uh, lighter, more richly shading colors, the mm -hmm. light browns, the light blues, you know, yeah. some, some multi-tonal stuff happening. Yeah. Um, and Diamine does, that's the one thing that Diamine doesn't really have yet. Yeah. So it'd be nice if Diamine had that. If that, if they had some of those lighter shading colors, they'd absolutely be it. They, yeah. I think they still are it for me, but that's that's the one hole in their game that I'm finding. I would, I would gladly trade 20 of their shimmer inks for 20 you know, lighter color, you know, chromo shading, chromo shading. colors. Yeah. Well, I'll, their green edition did have some they color had, shifting. They or... had stuff called some stuff called ah, some stuff called chameleon ink. That's right. Which I think the glitter particles can shift. Oh, kind of like a depending on yeah what where you're leaning and the, where the light is. Hitting. Got it. Got it. So, but um, yeah, I still yeah. I will have to say if I could just have one brand, it'd be Diamine because they do come out with new stuff pretty regularly. Well, yeah. an annually at least. Yeah. Um, but I would miss Sailor. But you know what? I do like having arbitrary rules to kind mm -hmm. of limit my selection of and to, to take guesswork out of my own head to be stress free and you know just kind of not worry. So. Going with an ink brand like Iroshizuku would limit me to, to, mm -hmm. to, it would make it a lot easier to choose. I wouldn't feel as yeah. paralyzed by indecisiveness if I, only if got... I only ever used one brand that just had, you know, like, you know, 20, 30 inks maybe. Yeah. So that, that's a consideration, but yeah. I also, I would. But you still don't have a ton of those softer colors with the Iroshizuku no, line. No, and I'm not really in love with any of them. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I was yeah, in the diamond. Yeah, What yeah. about you? Um, I'm torn because part of me wants to say diamond also for all the reasons, but I think in my heart of hearts, it would be Robert Oster. Mm. I have not tried an ink from Robert Oster that I do not really enjoy using. They've got a great variety. Yeah. And they have yeah. all their bases covered in terms yep. of, you know, saturated inks and lighter inks. Yep. So you really do get everything yeah and their sheen inks are really good without mm. being crazy in terms of dry time or smear uh fire and ice is great river of fire mm. is also great anything that has um, the term fire or water in it yeah like usually winners yeah dang mm. i know it's it's really tough and i really want to try that new um uh the detox Robert yeah, Oster, that that's kind a, of that's a pretty greenish, one. brownish. It just looks yeah. looks really cool. They are pretty creative with their colors. Like yeah. Diamond's getting creative with just like adding stuff to it, but yeah, I like that Robert Oster's still trying to just stick with more or less standard colors, but yeah, getting creative with you know their tones. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I feel like that's a solid. Uh, yeah, solid offer. I, think I would those love are to good. know. This is a good you know question for everybody out there. What yes. if you could only use one brand? What would it be? you know, no other brand ever. So think about what the future of that brand is. You know, if you're a Roar and Klinger fan, that's great, but you know they don't really do new stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I'd be interested know. if anybody picked Roar and Klinger or like Document Black, Deatramentous Document well, Black. Well, my thing is there's probably some inks out there where this is just, if this ink 
were to be discontinued, it would just destroy someone's soul because oh, they love absolutely. it so much. absolutely. The question is, though, would that be enough for them to pick that brand just for that one ink? Ooh. Like, if you have an ink that you, let's say, let, you know, um, uh, Alt Gold Grown, mm-hmm. you know, Roar and Clinger, if that mm-hmm. is your end all be all ink, would you say if you could only use one brand, that would be would it? Would you pick that? Would you sacrifice all of Diamine's variety just so you can have your one? Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's a curious, curious that's question. A, that's a good question. Yeah. I like it. Fun. We've got another one kind of like that coming up. Oh, okay. Um, but for now, um, we're going to stick within the ink zone. Okay. Because uh, Dragon Absurda asks us, there are shimmering inks, mm-hmm. sheening inks, mm-hmm. dual shading slash color changing inks, but if you could invent an ink with a new special property, what would it be? Oh, gosh. So an ink that has like a new yeah. a new ability. Oh, I know. I would do a since an ink that actually stays stinky. Um, no. Okay. I would do an ink that uh, changed color in different temperatures. So like if your hand crosses over the page a couple of times, it's making it warmer, so it gets a little more maybe saturated. Mm. Kind of like the mood ring of inks, if you will. So if you're leave like, it in the car. Cold, yeah, it's gonna be more saturated. If it's colder, it's gonna be maybe a little on the lighter spectrum. That could be cool. I think that could be fun. We used to have a long time ago, um, I think this was before you worked here, we had a Jair Bond mm-hmm. set that came with a um disappearing ink that was heat activated. What? That um, it was clear, went on clear. Oh my goodness. But then you could put it in the microwave or use a hair dryer or get and it, would, it, it, would, like, it would be a light blue, yeah. Oh, yeah, I want that, I, think, I want that I ink. don't think it was fountain pen friendly though. We oh. sold it and it, it would run through a fountain pen but everything else in that set didn't. Like there was a glow in the dark ink too. Ooh. But it was like suspiciously thick. And yeah. So I think that those weren't really supposed to be for fountain pens. It was yeah. fine, but um, yeah. But I remember using that, and uh, that would be that would be really cool. You know, write secret letters. But you need to get. It, we're talking like fire hot, like not oh, like not like not leaving like, in car hot. I think like no. pretty much burning. Yeah. So what yeah. you're talking about is like. Be, like if you're talking just by putting your hand on it, that's very sensitive to heat. Yeah, yeah, like a mood ring. You know, if you if you have warm hands, it's one color. If you have cold hands, it's different color. I also saw that apparently, according to Amazon, you can buy a mood ring toilet seat. Fun. I am horrified by the thought of that. You know what? I just remembered. We're 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 close to the same age. I, I want to uh-huh. know. Did your parents have back in the eighties a temperature reader that? Just stuck to your forehead. It was like a it was like a plastic piece of. Yep. You did? Yes, I know what you're talking I about. I just remember. I totally forgot about <laughs> those. Just yeah, them on that, that could <laughs> like, not have been effective. There's no way no. that was effective. No, I don't think so. <laughs> well, I remember going to the doctor and they'd put the thermometer under your armpit. Oh, man. Did they do that? I think they did. I'm like that can't also possibly effective. be effective. But that 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 like that forehead <laughs> thing. Like a, that, that's what my mom a had. Slot bracelet. Yeah, it yeah. was like it, it felt like a flimsy little like ruler that would come in a McDonald's Happy Meal or something yeah, like that. Yeah. It might actually have been that. It might have just always said 98.6. <laughs> you know, if there was like there were those old batteries where you'd like really, really firmly press on both ends and like, oh, look, it's still good. You know, the little yeah. meter would go up. They yeah. got rid of those. Oh, wow. That technology is not like that, that color sh- changing technology that is touch sensitive is just something that completely went away. Yeah. But in the 80s, that thing was huge. I remember having action figures where you could put your thumb on their oh, chest yeah. and you could show what element they were. Like, like oh, yep. look, it's yep. a log. This guy's wood powered I'm or something. pretty sure I had a baby doll that was similar. Like, you could rub its cheek and yeah. like a little like lipstick kiss mark or we something. We don't do that anymore. Like, the Why way, don't we? People don't think touching things and having it change color is cool at all. We just well, they stop, are wrong. We just stopped being interested wrong. in that. Yeah. Huh. No, I like to touch things and have them change color. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. All right. Well, you can smear your ink all over the place. I know. I know. I'm very glad that I have no ink on my hands. I know. So I'm far impressed. today, it's a big deal. Um, I think I would probably. So you know how when you, um, I've been thinking when you are cleaning out pens after they've been inked and mm-hmm. you are no, no, like dab, uh, uh, blotting a nib after it's been inked and you yeah, get a yeah. nice, I get a nice saturated plop of ink on the paper towel. Oh yeah. And then it feathers. And then sometimes, yeah. depending on what ink you're using, it has like an outline, like a, like halo. a halo. Why can't that happen on the page? Like, that's what I want. 
Ooh. I want, because I've, I've put so many nibs on so many paper towels and had them look so cool. Yeah. Like, and they still look cool when they're writing, but I know that that ability is there. Like, I know the ink could do that if it wanted to. Yeah. But granted, you know, it needs to be spread out on something super absorbent and you don't want to be actually writing on a paper towel. But it would be nice that if, would be very cool. if an ink could create that halo. And there have been some that I know that if you look really mm -hmm. closely, they do have a halo. Um, I know that some of the um, chroma shading multitonal inks can do a little bit of that. But I'm talking yeah. like a an outline. Like yeah. I, I want like a blue with no, no. I want a black ink with a hot pink outline. That's that what I would want. be really cool. That's what I want. That would be very cool. Mm -hmm. Or anything. Yeah. I don't care. I just want yeah. a very definitive outline, a very, very tight, close, easily, you know, yeah. uh, visible yeah. outline. Well, you know, a lot of people on... And I don't think that's crazy. because No. We, like, it's, it's absolutely It's kind of already doing it. Anyway, what were yeah. you saying? Um, a lot of people on Goulet Nation will post pictures of their cleaning paper towels or napkins or something that have all of those. And they look red. They are so cool. Needs to be on the paper. Yeah, I agree. On the paper. Come I on, people. I agree. Get on it, Die Mine. Get on it. Or anybody. Anybody. <laughs> um, okay, and we've got Jessica Sousa, 7887. If you could buy one last pen today and never buy a pen again, what pen would you choose? Oh, man. Um, I thought about this, so it's not mm -hmm. like I don't have an answer, but I'm still just kind mm -hmm. of wrestling with it. Uh, it comes down to, for the sake of the hypothetical, are uh -huh. we going to say this is a pen that we could get right now if we really wanted to, or one that's just like automatically given to us and price is not an option? Because that 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 will heavily sway my situation. I could do both. It's, it's, I'm going word for word. If you could buy one pen today so i'm gonna say it has to be something you could purchase that's not gonna be a lot <laughs> today i mean hey we we got a whole lot of pins yeah. here <laughs> okay if i could buy one like right now i can't no i don't know as if it's something i could buy right now with the money i currently have <laughs> i would probably get a um shown dark matter oh because I, yeah. I could afford one of those right now yep Yep. My wife would be like, why'd you buy that today? Like, this is, we, and he'd be like, did well, you pay the phone bill? Well, you understand. Um, it, Adrian they gave me a me hypothetical, it. Shannon. Adrian made me do it. <laughs> so, because I don't have a shown pen yet. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Brian's written a couple off, but I haven't, don't know if you know this, I have, I'm not yet able to just write things off oh. all willy-nilly yet, Adrian. One of these days. They should give you that power. They really should. I mean, you've, you'll be coming up on your 12th year. Yeah, I, uh, it has happened. Oh, it has happened. happened. In May. That's yeah. right. That's 12th right. Year. That should be the year. Maybe your thirteenth year. Just write things off. That'll yeah. be the day. Yeah. That'll be the day. I can just write things off. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that would be what I get if I could use the money I have available to me. Um, if I could save up a little bit, mm -hmm. I would like to get a pilot Urushi pen, like an eight forty five mm, in yeah. vermilion. Like I if I had that pen, I'd be able to be able to step away and look on really? my collection and then be okay. I just think there's so, that, that pen is so elegant. I mean, the customer yeah. Rushi too. Like obviously oh, oh, I would yeah. pick the customer Rushi, but I would not, That that's too far, too far out there yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, an 845, like I could get there. Like eh, I still, yeah. I still haven't bought a PS5. I'd like to get that done first. But if I, if I, if, the, if I knew that that was the last pen, yeah, I could, I could find a way to get to the 845. Now, what if it, what if it was somebody's giving you your pick of pen, like, any pen in the world, but it's your last pen you ever get, what would you go with? So you don't have to buy it, but you still can't ever get another one. I mean, it's hard to not say Namiki Emperor, right? Because oh, like, yeah. why, why not? Yeah. But yeah. but no, I'm going to need to go with a Montegrappa pirate pen. It's got a skull pirate hat up at the top. There's a, like a oh. blade coming out of its mouth as the clip. That's amazing. It's got little coins all scattered throughout the imagery. It's, Ooh, it's does it have and, like any like... um. Kraken or like, any like sea monsters or is I it more? I don't know. I think it's got a ship in there somewhere, but lots of cool. skulls cool. and doubloons and yeah, nice. just just overall piratey stuff. Because nice, like I think the chaos is cool, but it's just very much a Stallone pen. And while I like Stallone, I also do like pirate lore. I think yeah. that I find pirates fascinating. We've talked about this. Did yeah. you ever read that book? No, not yet. Okay, but I will. All right, you'll have to remind me of the name again. I will. 
<laughs> the Republic of Pirates. The Republic of Pirates. Um, so, yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, pirate pen, 845, yeah. or a shown pen, or, you know. Eh. You sound kind of like a, well, one Brian Goulet. It depends. It, do, it yeah. does. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. What about you? I would buy a Canalea pen. Oh, wow, that was fast. Yep. Yep. Are you talking about like one of the currently available ones or ones that they used to have available? Um, do you have a specific specific one in your head? No, you just, 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 just want to cross that off your Cross list. that off because I yeah. think they are gorgeous, the depth of color in them. And I'm going to, I don't know exactly how much they cost, but I know I would have to save up a little for yeah. a while to get one. So I feel like that's like an achievable goal, but not just like I could go out and buy a Pilot Metro today. You certainly could. So that would give me a little something. If it were the, I could just have any pen in the whole wide world. Yes. It, you're going to probably be a little disappointed, but maybe not. The Visconti Il Magnifico. Oh, interesting. Probably the green marble one, which I don't remember what the Italian name was. Was but it the Serpent? Yes, I think Serpentine? it was Serpentine. Serpentino? I yeah, yeah. Um, that oh, it, it, oh, that no, was gorgeous. It has, I, I love. I do love that pen. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that would be a hard one to yeah. say no to. I mean, and, you know, all right, what if the nib isn't the most perfect nib in the world? At That's that, okay. at that At that price, like, go get it yeah. taken care oh, of somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, getting a suit. You got to get it tailored. You get yeah. a really nice pen. You got to get yeah. the nib adjusted a little bit for I mean, your I writing would, you, style. You would want it to be as perfect as the pen. Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah, that's a beautiful pen. Uh, um, yeah, I think gorgeous. I like the, um, uh, I think I like the black one with the gold veining. Yeah, that um, one's really that's sick. That's really good looking marble. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, it doesn't look as kind of classically marble as the one you're talking about. True. The green one, I think that green marble has something to do with the uh, Duomo in Florence. I think that that it has something to do with that uh, um, uh, the the tile located in that building uh, of some kind. That I think, does sound. I feel like there's some significance to that green. Is I, what there I'm is definitely stumbling over. There is definitely significance to yeah. the green. So I think that the green. Yeah. I think that's a good choice. I think yeah. there's, there's some history there. We, you'd have to look it up. But yeah, yeah. Il Magnifico. Okay. Yep. I dig it. That's uh that is a pen that if if they were giving them away, I would say yes, please. I would too. Yeah. I would too. But then again, if they're giving away any pens, there's oh. there's more pens I would say yes to than there are pens I would say no to. You know that if something is being given away, I'll say yes no matter what it is. I do. I've had to I've had <laughs> I've I've heard her like someone be like, Hey, does anybody want this thing? Adrian says, I'll take it. I'm like, Adrian, no. <laughs> so because, we because I know your husband would yes. like be on my side there. Oh, absolutely. Are you how how many have you brought anything home recently that he was like, What did you do? Why is this here? Not yet. Not yet, mm -hmm. though. You know. I. You know. You did show restraint recently on one. I remember. I, did. I, I don't what remember was what it, it was, but you you were specifically like, Drew. Guess what? I didn't. I, I didn't I take said this. No, home. I didn't ask. <laughs> there for was it. this free thing, and I said no to it. <laughs> It really like it's really bad. Like p things will be posted for free on you know yes. Facebook Marketplace or something. I'm like, well, we could put that somewhere. <laughs> and my husband is like, we don't need it. Oh god, we don't need it. And you and uh, Brian K, you know, oh. they, they work together on the same team. And between the two of you, <laughs> it's terrible because you know you always feel like ah, oh, there's a there's a there's something I could do with this. And Brian is like, oh, I could I could take this apart and make this other thing with it. Yeah. Like, both y'all are like just yeah. you're enabling. It's, we it's, are. It's, we it's, enable each other, terrible. and it's really bad when one of us wants to buy a pen, and the other one is like, "Well, yeah, you totally should." Oh god. You, yeah, it's it's. Uh, oh man, what was the most recent pen you bought? What was the most recent pen I bought? Um. Because Brian, oh, cause oh I know the Bri Benu Sangria. Sangria, yes. Because I know, yeah. I know, I know, BK picked up the um, Edison. Uh, Garolite. Yes. And he was super excited yes, about that one. Yes, yes. He's a knife nerd, so, Ger that, so that yeah. micarta G10 Garolite thing, that really spoke to him. Yeah. I don't think he's bought anything since No, that's pretty that recent. One. That yeah, was pretty recent. That's pretty recent. Yeah, more recent than mine. I haven't I haven't been buying a lot this year. Yeah. I haven't I haven't either. I'm I for the first time am showing restraint because I know that there's gonna be some stuff coming in Q4. I don't know what, but I know there's gonna be something coming in Q4 that I'm gonna be like, oh, I really want that. I want that to be my Christmas present to myself, so. 
Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Well, that is our Q and our A yes. for this week. And um, we have a pen that we get to talk to you about. It's not a fountain pen. What? It's not. Oh, crazy. It's the Kakimori pen. And it does some stuff that no other pen that we have carried does. So we're going to get set up to show you. What it does. Exactly what it does, yeah. So hang tight, let's do it. Okay, so this is what the Kakamori um, situation looks like. So these two things are sold separately. You've got the nib holder here, which is, I mean, Adrian, this is a pretty standard thing. Yeah, it but, looks like a... But the opening is a little different than what I've seen. Have you ever seen an opening quite like this? I haven't. Normally it looks more like that X. Yeah, it's like a me like metal teeth. Yeah. Kind of. This is a plastic ring inside of a plastic ring inside of a plastic knob. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> you don't have to buy this if you already have a nib holder. But uh, it is available from us, from Kakamori, if you don't already have one. But uh, this is the star of the show. Yes. This is the actual nib itself. This one that we're selling is made of stainless steel, and uh, it is, it's is—it's got little flutes carved into the nib to hold the ink, much like a glass pen would. And the back of it is semi-hollow. Um, you can see it's got a space in there, but it doesn't go all the way down. So the nib itself is solid stainless steel, but you've got Which is really cool. a little bit of a cavernous situation so that it can be installed, like so. And it's super easy that, to install. Yeah, that like, was going to be my question. And is it easy to remove? Yeah. Very, very, very nice. Very smooth. That is very cool. Because I have one, mm -hmm. and it's installed into a, into a more traditional nib holder, and it's very not easy. You, it kind of scrapes and grinds. Oh, no. This is, I mean, you can hear the yeah, little. Yeah, it kind of pops. Yeah. That's Which is cool. cool. Maybe you can. That oh. is pretty cool. <laughs> nice. Cool. All right. So. The interesting thing, oh, the interesting thing about this pen is that depending on where you write with it, you can create different line widths. If you write with it upright, it'll do one thing. If you lean it to the side, it'll do another thing. So we're going to demonstrate that, or I should say, Adrian is going to demonstrate that, and she's gonna yes. just. She was just bragging about how clean her hands are. So I we're know. gonna see if she's gonna. We're gonna be change able to that. Keep that. <laughs> we don't want that happening. All right, so we'll do a little dippity do. Nice little dip. And then get a little off. Do you want to get it in there? You can kind oh, of yeah, see. Oh, let's, let's take a look. Um, Maybe. It's not going to focus. Mm. There we go. Yeah. So it's all in all those flutes. We can start at the very highest angle. Well, Wake up. Oh. There we go. Highest angle. That's a very fine line. Yep. And then we're a little bit thicker. You can see as I angle it down. Dang! Look at that. From there to there. It's a lot of fun actually to do. Well, I might have used all the ink up, but it's a lot of fun to play around with because you can get just... Jeez! Like, look at that. You're going to get some really lovely sheen with any inks that do sheening because it's just going to put so much down. Shading inks. Um, and I really like, because I hold my pens a little more, I think, on the, like, less than 45 degrees. Like, mine are flatter, not quite as good. So I'm always going to get a little bit more of that higher. That's a lot of fun. It is a lot of it fun. It is great for nib uh, or for ink swatching. Yes. So if you just want to play around with some inks, this is a great way to do it yeah. because you essentially are getting several nib sizes in one unit. Yeah. Do you know how expensive this thing was? I forgot to look this up. I believe the nib is somewhere in the $50 range and the holder is under, I want to say under $12, but it might be I under I think it's 10. more than, I think it, it might, I think it might be closer to twelve. Okay, it might maybe it, maybe I'm thinking under fifteen dollars. It might be under yeah. Because I, think it's I under feel 15. like the whole thing is is it's a little on the pricey side. Yeah, it side. is a little on the pricey side. But for what you're getting, you're getting oh. way more in, in contrast to a glass pen, which you never really know what size a glass pen is going to produce yeah. as far as line width goes. This one you do know. You're going to get a variety. Yeah, just of line depending widths. on what you want. 
And what I really like about this is, I mean, obviously you don't want to do that, but if you do that, it's, it's not going to break no. off. It's not going to break the, Stainless the steel. tip. Yeah, it's it's a really good pen. And you can see how much ink it holds. Like, this is a ton of ink. Yeah. And the old, sometimes you'll get a little bit of a, you know, no start because if you do randomly lay it down on the paper and it's just the steel part and not making contact with one of the little channels, it will, you know, not write, but you just need to rotate it a little bit and yeah. then it'll get going. Yeah. Um, our Can I give a shot? Absolutely. Do you want to redip it? Yeah. Do you want a fresh piece of paper? Did I dip it? There we go. Oh, that's fine. Our uh, customer care team has been working on some ink reviews on our blog. And uh, when we got this one, everybody was asking if they could try it out for their ink review so they wouldn't have to ink up so many pens and clean it because we like to try with, you know, more thin nibs and thicker nibs so we can really talk about an ink property. And this pen, I can see a lot of the customer care members uh, getting their own after getting to use it. That is cool. Yeah very fun and then you can go just super thin a little disappointed you didn't write corned beef hash oh, that it's, on, it's be, on my mind isn't it that should be what you write next why doesn't waffle house have corned beef hash they should they really should it seems like a waffle house thing to do yes all right, so that is the Kakamori nib and the nib holder that you may or may not need but it's available if you want it i will say that with this nib holder, even if you do already have one, you are getting a little bit of an extra benefit because of the way it mm -hmm. gets inserted. It's definitely more comfortable than other ones that I've experienced. Now, granted, yeah. I have no experience with dip pens. This is not our wheelhouse at all, but for a very applicable, relevant tool mm -hmm. used for trying out a bunch of inks, this absolutely works. And it's a lot of yeah. fun to have. So we do yeah. think it's a good addition, even if you're not a dip pen person, which we are not, um, we are gonna be using this all the time. Oh now. yeah, absolutely. Like, so just if you are a person who likes to play with ink and try out a bunch of inks, which Highly we recommend. absolutely are, yes. this is an excellent tool. It for is us. a wonderful tool and it just feels good in the hand yeah. too. So. Highly recommend. I'm excited. I'm excited that we're carrying it. Look at that. It's still just going. Yeah. 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 You just need to rotate it a little bit and then it'll pick it up and start mm. going again. Love it. It's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. All right. That is our spotlight. It is more expensive than the glass pens, but it also gives you more. It does. It definitely does. Oh, right. and if anybody was curious, the sink is Diamine Marine. Oh, thank you for that. One of the best uh, teal ish turquoise ish aqua ish what Te what were all your turquoise tilquoise tilquoise yeah. turquoise yeah. whatever you yep. want it's, it's one, one of those, those. <laughs> all right that concludes uh the actual relevant fountain penny portion of this pen cast so we're going to move into the what's happening section where we just talk about a bunch of hoopla tomfoolery malarkey and nonsense i love it i'm here for the nonsense What's another good synonym for me there? Malarkey. Hoopla, I haven't Hoopla, really. Hoopla, that's a good one. Um, all I can ever think of is like run amok, mm. but that's not really what it. No, we can't install that here. No, no. All right, well, I think hoopla. 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 All right. Um, so found out yesterday, mm -hmm. um, you were also in the Richmond area last yes, night. So yes. you were aware that there was some thunders and some Boy, rains. Howdy. Yeah. 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 So Hank, our newest Corgi, who is three years old, but we have not had him, but for, uh, you know, since October, mm -hmm. really doesn't like big storms. Oh, poor Hank. Um, he was absolutely terrified to the point where he was shaking. And he was not crying. He was not whining or anything. Mm -hmm. But I saw him kind of like moving toward a door um, to the room that his crate is in. So I was mm -hmm. thinking maybe he wanted to do that. And uh, so I picked him up and held him. And while I was holding him, he was just vibrating. Poor and so guy. I felt so bad for him. Yeah. And then he kept on like digging his 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 snout into my armpit to kind of like hide. And then I just kind of like covered his face and then he just stayed there. Like, this is good. Aww. This is fine. So as long as, long as I had my hand over his eyes, Aww. he was like, okay. Um, Poor Hank. I know. I felt really bad. But then I didn't feel bad because even after the storm had passed and it was time for him to go out for his final, you know, Outing. elimination of the mm -hmm. night. Uh, <laughs> 
he would not get into the grass. Oh, he, yeah. he could still hear thunders. He's like, nope, nope. Went right back in. So I'm like, okay, okay. Stayed up till one, let him out again after everything was done. Uh huh. No rain, no thunder, no nothing. Still would not. Oh. I even picked him up, walked him out in the middle of the backyard, plopped him down, he ran back, right back inside. So I was like, Hank, man, I do not need you peeing in the crate tonight. He didn't. He That's was fine. Good. That's but good. But still, it was irritating. Yeah, yeah. He is a scaredy cat dog. Lulu gets so scared uh, with storms and whatnot that we actually have doggy, uh, I guess it would be Xanax oh, for her. Yeah. Uh, because we live close enough to downtown where we can also hear the fireworks from the baseball. Oh. And she doesn't like that either. See, so. we have not had Hank for a 4th of July yet. So Ooh, I am yeah. a little, you know, we're preparing to hear what that sounds like, yeah. you know, and feels like next week. Yeah. But yeah, I've, and I've heard people tell me that I should get a Thunder shirt for him. I've had that for one for my, one of mm-hmm. our previous dogs, mm-hmm. and it didn't do jack. He could yeah. not have cared less. But he was more like barking at the thunder than mm. scared of the thunder. So mm-hmm. it might be different for him. We have tried a thunder shirt on one of our cats previously, and um, it pretty much just paralyzes them in my experience. Like it just makes them not want to move. Yes. So. So. But I've found that to be the case with almost all of our dogs. Mm-hmm. Like if you put something on them, like a costume or something, they're just like, what are you doing to me? And <laughs> so I feel, ter- right. <laughs> I feel terrible. I feel terrible about it. We take it off. Yeah. But Hank actually did wear a holiday sweater this past holiday did season. He? So so he and might he, actually. Did he like it? He didn't care. Oh. He walked okay. around. It didn't okay. paralyze him. Like Dinah just freezes like. Yeah. Mm, you know. Yeah. So Hank might actually benefit from the Thunder shirt. We'll see. Yeah. But um, yeah, so that happened, uh, dealt with that, poor little buddy. Went to a birthday party for my friend Josh um, over at his house. A lot of people there. Um, It was fun. Uh, It definitely depleted my, like I I, I get Mm -hmm. there and I'm like, all right, I'm talking to people, having fun. And then it just hits me where I'm just done talking. Yep. I just like, boom. And out of nowhere, I'm just, I'm tired, like physically tired. Yeah. And so I just, you know, I was being social, you know, laughing, and joking. And then I'm just sitting with Archer while he's playing the switch on a couch off to the corner. Yeah. And I close my eyes. I'm oh, just wow. Like, I'm just like. I, I, You're done. I just, yeah, it just takes so much out of me. Is there any like uh, re-up for you? Like if you take a little break, can you go back for a little while? Or like when I, yeah. your battery's empty, yeah. it's done. I can. Okay. I can. I, I need a little bit of recharge. You know, it, it's tem- temporary boost. Yeah. Not, not yeah. a permanent boost. Yeah. But, yeah. It's like uh, yeah. when you're in a video game and you're at almost zero health. Yeah. You drink a health potion. It doesn't put you back to 100% health. Right. But it's also not going to let you die. That's me. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. Nice. So we did that. I went to a birthday party this weekend, too. Did you really? Yes. A friend of mine celebrated her unbirthday because her birthday was earlier this month. Oh. And she just couldn't get us all because we... Pretty much everybody came from out of town, mm. but it was a delightful Alice in Wonderland themed tea party, but in the best grown up way. Ooh. So lots of really cute trinkets lots of hookah. and <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> lots of food. But like she did some really clever things. She found cookie cutters that for like um, a deck of cards, like so heart, diamond, puppy dog foot, puppy dog feet, <laughs> yeah. uh, and. Uh, spade and like cut those out on sandwiches so that when she put the sandwich together you saw like the little heart and you could see that the cucumber between it or you know the little diamond and you could see the like jam underneath it so that was really cute really that clever cool. um, had, a, had a good time we used vegetables to stamp our own tea towels did you know that vegetables can be used as a stamp well, a stamp a tea towel mm-hmm. like with paint uh-huh. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Which vegetable did you use? Or a multitude? Um, I used uh, endive. Uh, us southerners will call it endive. Oh. So it looks um, kind of like a romaine, like a small romaine lettuce heart. Oh. And cut it in half, and so you, oh. so it looked kind of like a rose. Nice. And um, I used an okra that had been cut in half to try oh. to be like the little part of the rose love okra um yeah okra is very good and then a lot of people were using corn and rolling it across their tea towel to get the like so corn on the what cup. do you do with the tea towel once you have a tea towel 
Um, mine is going to be used to cover bread as it's rising in our house. Oh. And it will never be used for anything like wiping your hands. So it'll be a nice clean towel for rising bread. Nice. So you use fruit to create floral patterns. That was what I did. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It was fun. It was really fun. Very creative. So that is cool. Birthday parties are cool. Yeah. It was, it was fun. It was yeah. an enjoyable, enjoyable time. Um, the pool was open, but there were too many people in it. So. And it yeah. rained a lot, didn't it? This was Saturday. Okay. So it was okay on Saturday. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I watched Back to the Future Part 2. Um, Love it. So I had, I had it, the trilogy, Once Upon a Time, lent it to a co-worker who is no longer here. I'm pretty sure I lent it to a co-worker who is no longer here. I don't know where it went. I lent it to somebody and never got it back. Oh. So I won't accuse anybody, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I totally so, will. No, I don't think you met this person. Huh. Um, but uh, so I had to rent it on Amazon, the first one. And oh. we watched it last week during Father's Day. And yeah. I was just like, oh, why don't I own this? I should own it. So I went ahead and, and found it at Target, the trilogy on uh, Blu-ray this weekend. So nice. bought it, watched the second one because Archer wanted to see the second one. So that was enjoyable. And the second one is uh, a lot of fun. The first one's like yeah. a better movie, but the second one is a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. As yeah. Some, some sequels tend to be. This the sequels are sometimes not as good, but sometimes yeah. they're more fun to watch. Absolutely. Like Alien versus Aliens, Rocky versus Rocky 2, like Yeah. The first yeah. one's the a, a better. Fine, fi- it's like a fine film versus a better movie, I guess. Yes. yes. Like you know, one's going to win more awards, but one is just better to yeah. sit and chill out. And, and then eat sometimes too. you run into the Indiana Jones Temple of Doom sequel. Oh, which that's is a weird one. Not a great story. No, and but not it's, a it's the one from 84, movie. so I have to like it. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so I did that with Archer, and then we went to get haircuts, uh, took him out to the traditional post haircut bubble tea. So we, we did that. And oh. then I needed to uh, go get him some more Crocs because that's what he wears when he has water day at oh. his summer camp. Um, huh. So he can just wear those all day and they can be water shoes slash nice. normal shoes on You're those probably, days. That's a, good, that's a good thought. Yeah, it's fine. They work for him. Um, the thing is, he starts wearing them all the time and they get destroyed like within mm-hmm. weeks. So mm-hmm. we said, dude, let's just stick with these for swim days and weekends. And yeah. Man, kids are so hard on shoes. And like you, you look at it, you're like, okay, well, I wonder if you'll have room to grow into it. Like, it doesn't matter. They'll, they're going to ruin they're it before. Destroy them. Yeah. yeah. So we did that. Um, and I finished Andor with Shannon, um, Star Wars. Oh, um, oh yes. So, what did you think? Well, I've seen it before. Oh, um, okay, but okay, I wanted okay. her to watch because we watched a bunch of shows that she majorly, majoritively, majorly. Major- she was the one who wanted to watch it more yes. than you did? Yes. Um, she had a majority interest in watching it? I want to say, like, she majoritarily chose it, or I don't know what the word, maybe I'm trying to make something up that doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, anyway. Tell, it, tell us the word we're so, thinking of. Thank you, please. Yes. So I was my turn to pick one. I picked Andor, which was nice. the least Star Warsy of all the Star Wars shows. So I thought yep. maybe she'd tolerate it. She tolerated it at best. She's just not a sci-fi person at all, oh. but that's fine. See, we, I really liked it, and I'm not a Star Wars person. It's good. It's, it's subjectively really good. good. Yeah, it's a really good story. So, yeah. yeah. She she enjoyed it, you know, as much as I had hoped, but, mm, um, that's good. you know. That's good. Uh, and then um, I kind of had a little bit of a, this is a little bit of a plunge here, so mm-hmm. bear with me. Archer finished Steven Universe. I told you that he had yeah, watched that. I told yeah, the pen cast that yeah. he had started watching that. He finally finished it. So it's a normal series, a movie, and then a finale series. So he watched that whole thing. And my first thought was, um, I was like, hey, if, if I would you wear a Steven Universe shirt? Because the main character wears just like a t-shirt with a big yellow star on it. And yeah. he's like, yeah, absolutely I would. I was like, okay, cool. Let me order you one. And Shannon was like, Drew, you're so nice. Why do you, you're always, you know, wanting to get him stuff from things that he likes. And it got me thinking about a lot of things. So yeah, I'm working on this jean jacket with all these mm-hmm. patches of just random crap that I like. Yep. And just because I like to put on my person things that excite me and things that get me, that make me happy. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, wearing my interest in a way. Uh, and I thought about that and I just kind of said, well, I just kind of like to do that. And when I was a kid, I liked to do that and I like to encourage other people to do it. Yeah. And... So that that was kind of a short little conversation. Then that day, I found this guy on Instagram who I had seen before. So it got served up to me because I clicked mm-hmm. on his videos. He's this um, British train enthusiast 
um, named, <laughs> uh, what was I wrote it down, um, Francis uh, Bourgeois. And he's just fanatically joyous about train spotting. And he will just, oh. you know, go up and he's, he's, you know, very popular. He's got like 2 million followers, wow. um, probably more on TikTok, but that's just the way it goes, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but he'll just talk about like, oh, all right, here in a couple minutes, we're going to see, uh, you know, so-and-so number, number engine coming coming right down here. And then he sees, he's like, okay, here it comes, here it comes. And they'll, the train will come by. The train will notice that he's there, honk a couple times. And he just gets so oh, excited. I love that. And it's so, it's such a popular Instagram channel because people just like seeing this guy get excited and yeah. him finding joy. Like you can see it in his face about this thing that he's passionate about. And that got me thinking about what I had talked about earlier about that Steven Universe shirt and, and mm -hmm. just kind of wearing what you're interested in and wearing yeah. things that kind of harken back to something that you're passionate about. And I thought about the fountain pen community and how they're so good. I'll say we are so good at just, you know, talking about the things that we like and being open about yeah. what brings us joy B because I asked last week about kind of everybody's origin story about like what got them into fountain pens. Were they mm -hmm. already collectors? Were, did they already have strong opinions about their writing instruments? And a lot of them did. A lot of them like always, like someone talked about like the little milky pens that they used back in mm -hmm. you know, junior high and like having like discovering the like, yep, you know what I am? I do have opinions about this. Yeah. And so many people online in, in the world like are finding joy in watching someone else's joy. I mean, that is great. I, I'm glad that person is doing that, but it's not hard to find your own joy and to just be extremely transparent with the things that you love and the things that bring you joy. And it's not hard to put on a t-shirt with something that you love on it. Yeah. Um, you know, a band, a, a TV show, like anything, like if it's a Shroot Farms beat show, like wear that. If it's a, yeah. you know, a, a, grab a con, grab a t-shirt, an overpriced t-shirt at the next concert you go to. Like it, it's, you know, we love to be around joy. Like mm -hmm. we do, we are drawn to it just like this guy's channel. Yeah. But yet we unfortunately find ourselves focusing so much more on the things that we dislike or the things that we condemn. And that that's yeah. just kind of where our society is at right now. But I'm very fortunate to be in this hobby with all of you who do bring that joy. You bring it to us, you bring it to each other, you bring it in the comments, you know, at pen shows. And uh, I just, you know, and that's what I'm doing with my, with my jean jacket. I'm just covering it like, oh, look, it's a band, it's a cartoon, it's this random, you know, whatever. Uh, it's just crap that I like. But and, everything means something and it's, to and it, you. And it's out there. Like my yeah. opinion is that, you know, and Brian was talking, you know, he told me uh, recently we had a vendor visit and I was just yapping about stuff that I like. And then all of a sudden I hit, I can't remember what it was, but I hit on something and one of our vendors was like, oh my God, I love that. And Brian's like, oh man, Drew, you can connect with anybody. And I'm like, no, not really. I just, I talk enough about the crap that I like. Yeah. Eventually I'm going to hit on yeah. someone else's yeah. thing that they like. Like, so if you just get it out there, if you just like wear your passions, whether figuratively or literally, eventually you're going to, you're going to connect with that, with another person that also yeah. finds joy in that thing that you find joy in. And I'm like, just, just, I don't know. I just want to say, get it out there, everybody, I guess. It's just, so, it's so, something that people crave and they do want joy to be out there in the world. And don't keep it to yourself. If you're excited yeah. about something, just let it out there. You know, put it on your person or just, you know, get it out your mouth. Like, just get it out there. Like, let the passion and the joy just flow. And eventually you're going to connect with somebody that's going to really, really appreciate it. It might change their day yeah. or, uh, you know, I don't know, might get them to buy a fountain pen. <laughs> I don't know. But <laughs> no, that, I love that, that. that. That's where I ended with that. It was just something I was thinking about yesterday as I kind of went through this chain of events with the t-shirt and the train guy and yeah you know i led you know of course tied that into you know my thoughts about fountain pens and our you know hobbyist community and yeah so bottom line i'm very i very much appreciate all of you out there and what you allow me to do you know both professionally and as a hobbyist uh in my life so yeah yeah i don't know just wanted to get that out I there i like that i like that a lot yeah. yeah you do a pretty good job with that i'd say you you're, you are you do not 
keep your passions inside. No. You're very, very transparent on the things that get you excited. I am a very enthusiastic person You are about and, and, the things I am enthusiastic you, you, about. You guys know that I'm a pretty enthusiastic and energetic person <laughs> as well. Adrian, when she gets excited about something, regardless of who is around, you can hear her just, ah! Oh, like, ah! yes, that, that <laughs> right there. Like she just squeaks. Um, or something when she is I do overjoyed about something or she gets good news and like yeah, yeah she gets excited very often so no I, yeah. I, I love that about you yeah you I, I share my joy uh, loudly and vocally yes uh, whether you want to or not it yes. just instinctively happens and sometimes it scares people around me because they're <laughs> yes. not dead quiet and then all of a sudden <laughs> oh! <laughs> I'm used to it by now but you know yeah yeah it yeah. can be surprising what do you have going on in your life um, well, this upcoming weekend, uh, we start our eighth, uh, birthday party weekend long celebration for my husband. His birthday is the 4th of July. A week long. Uh, well, we start on, uh, Friday. We'll have, uh, technically Thursday night. We'll have people coming into town and staying through until Tuesday. So five days of people and staying at your house. Uh -huh. How many people? 10. What? 10 people staying at our house. you I've been to your house. Where? Uh -huh. Where? I mean, it's not a tiny house, but it's also not a there will giant be ten person. Lots of air mattresses and lots of people sharing rooms. Wow. Yeah. Wow, and lots yeah. of board games. And lots and lots of board games. Adrian is a fan of board games. Yes. And I say that, meaning completely obsessed. Yeah, my husband and I own slightly more than five hundred board games. <sighs> It's, it's a lot. We have a great time. Um, so a lot of our personal life is getting ready for that. You know, making, Were you guys into board games before you got together or did this kind of... Ricky was into board games before I was. Mm. He got me into board games. And honestly, it's only the last couple of years that I really like stuff started to click for me. Mm. Um, well, what do you mean last couple of years? You've been into, you've been very much into board games since I've known you and I've known you for like six yeah. Uh, so I was into a few, I was very into a few board games and now I'm very into like a okay. hundred plus board games okay. like that I could pick up and teach somebody. Um, so a lot of our personal life is going towards just getting stuff ready for that, which is going to be super fun. What are some like must have annual food items that you always have to have at this event? Oh, um, we absolutely go crazy for fruit by the foot. What? Absolutely. We get the Costco size box. Really? It is gone. You just throw and them like streamers. I wish. <laughs> well, I saw, did you see the, I think it was Millie Bobby Brown and it might've been Jimmy Fallon. I believe that's who it was. If it was Jimmy Kimmel, I apologize. But they did a, you unwrap the entire fruit by the foot, mm -hmm. start the end in your mouth and it's who can eat it the fastest without your hands. Oh, I did I not feel see like, that. I feel like that is a, a contest we're gonna have to have this year. Well, see, you need to do the you need to do the animal like you know neck jerk. Oh yeah, sort of like that's what you need. You yeah. can't you can't just use you, your mouth and your lips. Yeah, you gotta, no, you got to like, employ the neck. Like, yeah, like bird style. Get it to jump yeah. into your mouth like a bird. Yeah, like a bird. Like a bird. So that that that's the equalizer right yeah. there. That's how yeah. you take care of business. Absolutely. Right. Um. So that's always a really popular food, and we generally do really like late night pizza where you don't really need it to be delicious you just need it to be hot and at your door so delivery yep nice. yep yep what's, what's your preferred pizza delivery place um you do local or chain yeah we do a place that's just up the road from yeah. us gotcha um cool what do you get yeah. on your pizza mushrooms you're a mushroom person mushrooms and cheese i like mushrooms yep yep and then um that's really i mean other than just working here yeah. um we've had some really great customer interactions which is always super exciting you know people who are so happy i did have uh somebody last week who um long story short which i try to do they had reached out and given us some feedback about something and i was just so grateful for that they reached out and gave us this feedback in such a polite and constructive manner that um, was it about your behavior Yes. Yeah. It was telling me to pipe down. That was me. Keep, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You're welcome. <laughs> um, so I thanked them and I said, you know, I'd really like to thank you for doing this. And I sent them a, a small gift card from us. And I was like, you know, please use this on your next order. Thank you so much. Nice. And he said, well, I actually 
have everything that I need for a while and I'm not going to be um, I'm not going to be placing an order anytime soon. But I have a pen pal that if you would be willing to transfer the gift card to ah, them. Look at that. I would love for them it's to like get a Starbucks to use drive through it. line. I know. <laughs> and I just like like you said like the joy that just it yeah. was so amazing to, you know, this little this little just like thank you for giving us the feedback. Thank you for being, you know, friendly and and constructive about it and we we brightened his day because he was like, wow, you guys listened. Thank you. And we brightened his pen pal's day by giving him a, a little gift card to help out with shipping next that time. Cool. So, um, so yeah, that was, that was really awesome. And, and um, yeah, that is nice. Yeah. And you, you recently um, went to a, uh, like a conference sort of deal. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I went on an amazing leadership retreat. Um, I, you, you are the manager of the customer care department. You've got like I what, am. five yep. people on that team. Yep. Look at that. Look Knowledge. at that. It's almost like you were the customer care manager before me. Oh, man. Everything I learned, I know from you. Oops. Yeah. Sorry about um, that. No, it was an amazing leadership retreat. It it focused on uh, conscious leadership, holistic leadership. So not like rigid businessy synergy. Yeah. No, 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 no. Principles. With it, the, it's yeah. talking like one of the things they said, which I love and I think really resonates with us as a company is you have one life. You don't have your work life and your personal life. That's a very modern way of thinking. You have one life. Because it didn't used to be that way. The, the, yeah. there's a, the old school mentality is like, no, separate. But, yeah, you clock out at five and everything's, yeah. that, that's not and how like, it happens I anymore. Mean, that, sure, that'd be great if that's the way it happens, but that's not that's yeah. not, that's not yeah. really realistic. So we did a lot of work about like what inspires us, mm -hmm. what excites us, what is our passion, what is our purpose for being there. And I just came back feeling incredibly inspired just by being with a whole bunch of other people who want that thing that we want, which is to treat each other like humans, celebrate each other's wins, you know, care about each other, treat people as people. I'm like, oh, this is Goulet, this is Goulet, this yeah. is Goulet. So it was an incredible experience. And I'm so yeah. thankful that we get to do those things. Being a relatively excitable person, yes. as you are, when you get, when you <laughs> go to those things and you get all jazzed up, like, oh, we should do this, we should do this. Like, do you come back like wanting to change a bunch of things or do you? Um, well, because this one was probably a little bit more yeah. broad, maybe not as much like, structured yeah but there are definitely if i you know take a take a seminar about like you know better communication yeah. or training like i took a great seminar about training last year and i was like okay this is how we're going to do training from here on out like i am making it happen yeah. and i did and it worked really do you, do you find well. yourself having to like you know rein yourself back in a little bit Absolutely. just knowing yourself yeah that's really yeah. awesome though yeah. i uh i have learned that i need to Take about a week between the idea and the implementation and nice. like really think through it because mm -hmm. there's some things that you hear that are great and in theory, but then you like drill down to, wait a second, we're a team of five people. I don't need this many steps for this thing. Like yeah. I just, it, it's, you know, and that's the benefit of working for such a small company is sometimes you can cut out the, the extra stuff. But yeah. but yeah, I get I get very excited. Um, although one of the pieces of feedback I got at this retreat more than any other, and I don't know how I fooled them, but they were like, you're so calm. You have such a calm presence. And I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> no, I'm not. Mm. Yeah. I wouldn't have. Calm is not a word. Maybe, I think maybe anybody because you're in a different environment, me. you're kind of just like, you know, yeah, because I'm I'm like that too. Like when I'm not uh, in an environment that excites me, I'm mm -hmm. pretty quiet. Yeah, and pretty mellow. But I'm very often in an environment that gets me yeah. jazzed up. So yeah, yeah I think you I'm, and I are similar in that. Regard. I'm the same way. Like yeah. I try not to put myself in an environment where I'm not going to be having a good time and want to be contributing. Yeah. Um, but this was a little bit different because there was a lot of like introspection and a lot of, you know, making plans. But part of what I loved that they talked about is like, you can make a plan, but at the end of the day, you've got to be flexible with your plan because you don't know what's going to happen on step two. So if you're focused on step five, step two might derail you. Mm. But again, you know, we talk about flexibility here all the time. Yes, we do. So it just, it was a great, it was a great opportunity. Yeah. 
That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Well, I hope your week-long crazy thing happened. Uh, like, I hope that goes well. So you're going to be off all next week? Uh, no, I'm just off uh, Friday and Monday. And okay. then, you know, we'll be closed Tuesday. Okay, cool. Um, well, that'll be a nice yeah. long... Yeah. You'll be ready to come back by then, I think. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Well, that is the what's happening portion. And uh, we're going to hit some company updates. And then we'll get out of here. Um, Company-wise, as we alluded to, and as you may have guessed, July 4th will be a day where if you place an order with the Goulet Pen Company, it's just going to sit here for a little while. For 24 so hours. For 24 hours. It will remain in virtual stasis. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be closed on July 4th. Everybody's going to get a day to go and do their own stuff, such as calm their dog when uh, the fireworks start happening. Yes. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you like fireworks? When I was a child, 10. Right now. As an adult, maybe like three. Same. Yeah. I I do, do not care. Nope. Like, I, I love that people love them. I don't want to take that away from anybody, but I will not seek them out. Mm -mm. Like, I have no interest. If they happen and I catch them, I'm like, oh, yay, look, yeah, fireworks. Exactly. This is exactly. exciting. But I, do, I will not go to a mm -mm. place to see fireworks. No. The only... Well, the reason I don't like it, reason number one, is it's almost always in the summer and it's hot. That too, yeah. And I don't like having to sit outside just waiting for something to happen. Even at Disney World, they have one of the most spectacular fireworks shows in the world. And the amount of crowd mm -mm. that just compresses onto you just to watch nope. the fireworks, I'm like, I want to be as far away from that as possible. Yeah, I don't like, like it's. It's never worth it. No, it's no. I it's agree. never worth it. I remember the best firework experience I ever saw was... You know, uh, I was in a restaurant at Disney World, and okay. we could see the fireworks from inside the restaurant where we were eating. That's great. Ooh, yeah. That's great. Like, they're yeah. just there. You're having dessert. Oh, like fireworks. Yeah. Yeah. And then one time when I was a kid, we were out on a boat somewhere, and we could see fireworks from the water. Oh, like, that, that would pleasant. be cool. That was pleasant. That but would be very cool. That's why I'm with you. I'm like three out of ten. Because yeah. there are yeah. some times. That's why it's not zero out of ten. Yep. But, uh, yeah. So, anyway, 4th of July holiday, that's happening. Um, it's interesting enough at the Goulet Pen Company here this week, uh, we're having a rummage sale, uh, sale, which we're just, yeah, we're not buying anything, but we're bringing in stuff from our homes, and people can take it home to their homes if they want to. Just kind of too good to throw away sort of deal. And then in just an effort to kind of, like, minimize our waste, we're going to see if anybody else here would value it, clothes, mm -hmm. toys, kid stuff, um, and then we're going to donate it, uh, donate all the stuff that, you know, doesn't get taken to uh, Goodwill. So. so the last time we had one of these, I picked up something that used to live in the Brown household. Did you really? Mm-hmm. Was it my Dwight Schrute suit? No. Because I regret getting rid of that thing. Yeah. No, it was a uh, like a little candle holder that goes in the middle of your table. Oh, yeah. That looks like some vines. Yeah, and I remember that thing. Motives in it. I remember it that It sits thing. in my fireplace now, and I light it occasionally. Holy since, crap. Since we don't have, yeah. we can't have a fire in our fireplace. It was, yeah, that was on the dining room table for many yep, years. Yep. I think that was in our, I love like, it. our first apartment. I love it. How about that? Yeah, I got rid of two suits, a uh -huh. baggy, like very like 2002 style sh suits. Mm -hmm. One of them was like a horrible pinstripe thing. And the second one was this brown on brown thing that I was like, that's disgusting. And, but then I did a murder mystery night where I was supposed to be like some skeezy Vegas bookie. Uh -huh. And I'm like, dang it, oh. my brown suit. Oh. I couldn't use it. Was so. it velour? No, but I did end up wearing a velour track top nice like you know like yeah zip, it was like you know a quarter zip thing uh -huh. i bought a cheap gold chain on amazon and love it i look terrible did you like slick oh your i hair? did i did and it's getting so thin in the middle adrian it just exposed so much skull oh. up the top it looked i mean i kept it because i'm like this looks this looks good but like sleazy but oh yeah. man i was so upset with my reflection <laughs> but i did yeah. i did uh yeah no it, yeah. it was okay um I think I, I uh I think I might have won the Drama Queen award for that night. I'm not sure. Shannon won one, I won one. So we're the drama queens. Anyway, um and then next week, July fourth week, we are taking a week off of the pen cast. So um I will be out um that week. Uh Brian will be here, but um, you know, our uh, part time editor won't be here, so it's just like not worth doing the pen cast. So sorry about that, but at least we're doing this one. Yay! Yay! Um, and when we get back, we will fill you all in on some details for our um, big live pen cast event at the DC Pen Show. So, super um, exciting. Stay tuned for that. So excited for that. Yeah. 
Um, so we can go ahead and wrap this up now. Thanks so much for watching and thank you for the comments as well. Again, I read all of those. I really appreciate it. I love it when you guys talk to each other. It's like my friend from over here, my friend from over here meeting. I'm like, yay. Oh, they like each other. Right? That's yes. exactly what I feel yes. like. When anybody comments on anybody else's thing, I feel like I've just like got two friends together yes. and it makes yes. me happy. Um, so thank you. Please leave us your feedback about how we're doing and ask us questions on how we can... Uh, Ask us questions that we can answer on the show. I'll probably put up a question on the YouTube community page. If you haven't clicked on the community tab, do that. Um, you can always ask questions there. Even if it's an older post, I'll still see those. Uh, check out GoolayPens.com for all your fountain pen, ink, and paper needs. And like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and Instagram stuff. Normally, Brian would give us a fun fact at this point, but that distinguished honor is going to Adrian this week. So she's filling those shoes yes and perhaps those cargo shorts i don't know whatever you want to do um, but channel your brian and uh channel my inner brian that's right i really should have prepared a, a dad joke or nope. two but nope. i didn't don't need to do uh, that but i do have two fun facts bring them on the first one is very timely for us here at goulet excellent so experiments have actually been carried out in universities to see how many licks it takes to get to the center of a tootsie pop i, I did that one time when i was a kid well how many did you get it was like five thousand something 5,000? Mm -hmm. Are you sure you counted correctly? Nope. Okay. I was a stupid kid. Okay. Uh, because this has the range anywhere from 252 to 411. Oh, man. I counted a long time. Like, the, like, well, then, but... Mine were just single licks. That's what it I'm like. It, are the we whole thing about, did not go in my mouth. Because if we're talking about, like, the whole thing in your mouth, nah. like, that, to me, that's more than a... Like, Actually, no. I, I remember I was doing it. It was just... Yeah, I remember. I did sometimes put the whole thing in my mouth, but I counted those as two. <laughs> I think that's fair. Just, but that could be why you get to 5,000. No, I was, I was probably like um, nine. I don't, know. Yeah. Don't, don't trust me. But I think we should have a company uh, contest with our mini Tootsie Pops because I think we could make that happen in like a day. Maybe. Like who can get to the, the mini? Now, did they use a human or did they have some sort of, or, some sort of auto liquor? I like a bunch don't. of tongues on a wheel that someone cranked. It was like, blah, 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 <laughs> Well, I was assuming it was humans, but now I kind of want the tongue wheel. <laughs> I kind of want the tongue wheel. <laughs> Sounds like something of a Dr. Seuss. Yes, I can picture it perfectly. Uh, yeah. Well, what's the second fun fact? So the second fun fact is it is impossible to hum and hold your nose at the same time. Mm. No, it, the air doesn't go anywhere. Right. Mm. So mm. Well, like, you, you, can, you can do it for... You can do it for a second, but then it, then your hum stops. You got nowhere yeah, to go. it's like it. But I would never say that when you're humming, you're like blowing air out of your nose. Mm, neither did I. But, but like you, you can hear your hum go up to your nose, and then it stops, stops. where your fingers are. <gasps> right? Isn't what? that crazy? Everybody is trying that right now. I know. Now. I know. I was like, so tell us <laughs> how how that worked you for you. You couldn't do it either, could you? Nope. <laughs> That's amazing. Right? I love it. Thank you for that. You were so That's welcome. a solid fun fact. That is, I thought that was and a really fun fact. thank you for joining fact. us today. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you being me. here. Let me, let and me, there you go. Look, not, you're channeling Brian again, I hitting your mic. I am channeling Brian again. Gracious no, man. this was great fun. I love watching the pin casts and reading the comments as well. And as the manager of the customer care department, like we love talking to you all. So please email us, uh, ask us your questions, give us your recommendations, give us your feedback. Just talk to us. Just say hi. Yeah. Just say hi. We're here for you. Yep. And if you call us, someone picks we'll up. Answer. There's there's not even a messaging, you know, uh, what do they call it? A uh, uh, phone tree. Phone thing. tree. Yeah. No. Yeah. Someone's just gonna pick up and say hi. So. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have fun. Right on. Right on.